Greetings family, Dr. Joe here, and I'm here today to talk to you about five health myths. Five different myths that you hear about healthy lifestyles, perhaps healthy foods, healthy living that people need to know and understand. Number one, the concept of health food. A lot of people think that there are certain foods that are healthy and certain foods that are not. Yes, it is true that certain foods are are natural, certain foods are more processed. However, when you think that health food exists, a lot of people fictitiously think that I can eat as much as I want. A lot of times natural foods can be diabolical to certain people based upon where they are. What makes food healthy is not necessarily what you're eating, but the relationship that you have with that food. Having a good relationship with food means that I'm eating it in the proper amounts in the proper com com combinations, as well as I'm eating the foods that are in sync with my goals, expectations, and desires. If I'm a diabetic who's trying to rid myself of diabetes, eating an abundant amount of fruit, although healthy, may not be ideal. Likewise, if a person is trying to lose weight, eating healthy oatmeal, starchy vegetables may not be ideal. Again, Health food and the concept is not necessarily about what the food is, but the relationship that you have with that food holistically. Number two, buying foods based upon the external label. There are many people who think that the nicer and the more natural and the different catch words like organic, all natural, um, GM, no GMOs, cage free, that the front of the label is how and the information that I need to determine if I should buy this product or not. You should never buy a product based upon how pretty or how organic or how natural the label looks. Don't get caught up on those catchphrases, the colors, the different things that you see on the outside of that particular label. The key to knowing what's in any food is you have to read the ingredients. By law, they have to put, according to weight, the highest amount of weight of that particular ingredient is always the first product, and it progressively goes down, etc. This gives you insight to know how processed a food is, how many ingredients are on the inside of it. So don't buy your meals or your foods based upon how pretty the label is. Read the ingredients. Number three, only young people can lose weight. This is a huge myth. And there are plenty of people who've come through 40 Days with Dr. Joe, be it the 40 day turn up or be it the journey. I've worked with people who were in their 50s, their 60s and their 70s and had no problem losing weight. What people have to understand is the older we get, the more efficient the metabolism becomes, meaning you don't have to eat as much and meaning you don't have to sleep as much because sleep has uh, inverse connections to not only caloric intake and caloric adaptation and how our calories are processed. As we get older, the body becomes more efficient, which means you can't eat like you did in your 30s, in your 50s. You can't eat in your 70s like you were in your 40s. We have to adjust as we age, but no matter what your age is, you can lose weight. And it is a complete myth that only young people are efficient at burning fat. It's just having an understanding of that, making the adjustments and getting the results. Number four, you have to have high intensity workouts to stay fit. This is a complete myth. Uh, over the last 10 or 15 years, you hear HIIT training being a huge keyword in the fitness community. High intensity interval training. A lot of people who are running, sprinting, jumping, doing a lot of things that a lot of world-class fitness athletes are doing. And those things are great. However, those types of exercises can be very, very compromising to joint health. And what we have to understand is you don't have to run and sprint and involve yourself in high intensity interval training each and every day. You can do low impact things like walking, like jogging, like swimming, like hiking. In many instances, these types of activities that are low impact are more efficient at even burning fat. 
that the more strenuous the activity is and when my heart rate reaches and passes a certain threshold, it begins to use glycogen and those are the carbohydrates when it's materialized into your body that the body is able to use as an immediate uh, source of energy. However, when we're doing low impact types of activities, uh, walking, swimming, hiking, that the body is burning fat. The point is you can mix your workouts. You don't have to have high intensity each day. Or if you're a person that you have physical restrictive type of activities, you can get in a good walk, a good hike, a good swim, a good low impact workout and still be successful assuming that your diet is in check. Fifth and finally, being muscular is what we all need to be focused in on. Having a muscular physique is not necessarily what every person needs to desire. Uh, the key of what we need to desire to be healthy, not that there's anything wrong with being muscular, but to be lean. You want to have a good body fat ratio that is healthy for your gender as well as your age. The leaner we are, the more we can work at our abdominal circumference, keeping it down, keeping a good healthy amount of fat to muscle ratio. That's what we want to be. We want to get to the point to where we're light enough and healthy enough to where we don't require any type of pharmaceutical drugs to lower our cholesterol, diabetes, uh, hypertension, things of that nature, and to where we can optimize our overall health and wellness. So a lot of times when we see fitness magazines and videos, a lot of those individuals that we're seeing are enhanced, meaning that they are on certain drugs that help to manipulate the body. Not to negate that those individuals are, are not working hard or not training hard or not being disciplined because it takes all of the above to reach those pinnacles of physical musculature on a person's body. But when the everyday person like you and I looks at those magazines, we oftentimes assume that we can get there through a natural pathway and that is not correct. The key is to be lean, to have a healthy lifestyle, eating healthy foods, having a good relationship with foods, being mobile, and as we, old, as we get older and as we age, to age with grace, vigor, and vitality. I hope you enjoyed this as we debunk five myths in our community, in our culture, in the industry. Till next time, I'll see you. Peace.